Now you can enjoy the happiness of the holidays for the next six months by paying less and making more money by getting 180 days of picks from your favorite handicapper at a huge discount. This limited time Christmas special gives you a 90 day all access pass with a handicapper of your choice at wagertalk.com plus an additional 90 days of all access passes at no additional cost, an $849 value. This comes out to just under $5 per day, includes all sports released and any 5% best bets, normally priced at $35 each. Your access with your handicapper will cover NFL through the Super Bowl, college football through the national championship, any NBA and NHL action, including playoff games played during access and the start of the MLB season. Plus, if your handicapper does UFC, soccer, tennis, or any sport, yep, it's included. Happy holidays from everyone at Wager Talk. Hey guys, welcome in and happy Thursday to you. Time uh, for a little college basketball tip-off show here on this December the 16th, powered by wagertalk.com. If you've had uh, trouble sleeping as of late, man, have we got a card for you in college hoops here tonight. And we promise uh, to go through these rather quickly for you with uh, three of the finest uh, that are going to break down a couple of these games on the card, including Ralph Michaels. We got Steve Merrill in the middle and Dave Koken here with us on this Thursday. Uh, Ralph, my friend, uh, as we get ready to head into a uh, much bigger and better card here over the next couple of days in college basketball, we also have bowl games coming up. And I know uh, you are locked and loaded over at wagertalk.com. What's going on? Yeah, you know, two things. I mean, again, college basketball show, but if you haven't gotten your Wager Talk free bowl guide, Go to wt.buzz backslash rm. I have one 2% today in college basketball. I'm going to use it as a best bet here for free. And uh, college bowl game, I do want to point out, I have a 5% college bowl game going this weekend. You can still get it for 2 bucks. It was part of the $2 handicapper on Tuesday. That play is still available, not in the brick, but just go to my homepage and get a 5% college football play for only eight quarters. All right, awesome stuff. And a man who needs absolutely zero promotion, mostly because he's going to do it himself. Steve Merrill in the house. What is going on, Merrill? What do you got locked and loaded at wagertalk.com? Well, first, I'm going to promote it a little bit better for Ralph. Eight quarters sounds expensive. You got to stick with two dollars. Two bills sounds a lot less expensive. Um, that's a great deal there. And um, yeah, nothing could be finer than a light basketball coat for Joe Ranieri's 60th birthday. I mean, if this was ever a birthday oh, card for you right. right here, this basketball card, my goodness. <laughs> I hope you get a better birthday card than we got a basketball card today. Uh, but nonetheless, happy birthday, Joe Ranieri. You deserve each and every one of those years. And, yeah, um, yeah right. basketball has been great. College basketball the last two years combined. I'm number one at wagertalk.com. Uh, we're not going to necessarily add on to that number one ranking with this light card tonight, but we'll go over some games with a free play here. Uh, get my best bet. So heading to the bowl season starts tomorrow on Friday. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And don't forget, you can still get two for the price of one both college and pro basketball for a full 30 days for half price. Buy one, get the other free for 179 for both of them. Hoops 179. Hoops 179. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, Steve, thank you, I think. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave <laughs> Tolkien, I know you've got uh, bowl season, uh, you know, just about to begin here. I know you've got a couple of best bets up at wagertalk.com. Anything else we need to know up there? I'm not putting up. Games very early in the Bulls because uh, the information could change what rosters look like. But I, I feel okay in putting up the games I like on Saturday. Two of them are best bets, and I will go with those two. And that's probably it. Um, but, but I'll give you some other opinions on the football show and the College Football Daily Show. So be sure and tune in for that. Uh, I've got a hockey game up tonight, which everybody who follows me already knows what it is because. <laughs> We've been playing the Vancouver Canucks since they made the coaching change and have picked up five straight winners. There's no reason at all to get off it. And college basketball uh, took me about three minutes to handicap the Thursday card. And I concluded that there is no chance that I will play anything tonight. I'll be watching the Chargers Chiefs game, which should be a, a really good football game. And I don't have any action on that, but, but I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah, should learn uh, a little something about both those teams tonight. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go Canucks. 
All right, guys, let's speed through these here. Let's take a look, of course, at the number two team in the country, the Duke Blue Devils headlining this atrocious card here tonight, taking on App State. They opened up as a three-touchdown favorite. Uh, 139 and a half is an opening total here. Uh, what do you think here, uh, Ralph? Any chance App State pulls off the uh, – no, who are we kidding? Any way they cover here? I don't think so. You know, the more I looked into this game, I was close to using Duke as a play. I didn't get there. You know, Duke was off their layoff. They hadn't played in 20 days. They were off that loss to Ohio State. They came out and crushed South Carolina State, so they are back in gear. One thing to talk about this Duke team, a couple years ago, they were a very fast tempo team with Trey Jones, a point guard, number 34. Last year, with Roach, a freshman, they really slowed it down. They were number 152. They're up to 74, and they're playing a lot quicker now. I expect their tempo to be in the top 40 in a few more weeks. Roach is now a sophomore. Wendell Moore getting the play. You look at Duke, 21-point favorite against Gardner-Webb. They score 92. 33-point against Lafayette. They score 88. 26-point favorite to Citadel. Score 107. 36-point favorite South Carolina State. They score 103. App State, two games on the road this year. Shot 35% at Iona, shot 39% at Furman. And App State has not turned the ball over more than 12 times on offense. Guess what? They're playing their third game in six days. They're going to turn the ball over probably twice as much as they're used to doing. Duke pressuring the pace. Folks, I do like Duke. I may actually change my mind and go ahead and bet the skin. All right, there you go. See, just like that, you talk it out there, Steve Merrill, uh, and voila, you got yourself a play. What do you think, though? Uh, you got enough faith in Duke to lay it? If you took away the names of the teams and you just looked at the the matchup here, or at least from a pace perspective, you would actually start looking maybe at the underdog here, but I don't disagree with Ralph. Uh, Duke is probably the way I would play this. I'm not um, going to back a, a big dog and hope they cover here. But Appalachian State, you know, he talked about how fast Duke is playing or going to play faster as the season goes on. Appalachian State actually, meanwhile, is 321st in tempo out of 358 teams. So normally when you get a big slowdown dog, that can sometimes cause havoc for these faster teams. Uh, but it's just a mismatch in talent. Um, I do think the fact that App State's turned the ball over 11 or less times in every game but one, 12 or less in every game this season also bodes well uh, for the big underdog. Um, Duke, though, however, has always been a great home favorite, and uh, Ralph can probably pull up those numbers for us. Uh, I always like to give him a little SDQLing live on the show to do on the side there, but I know back in the 90s and 2000s, uh, Coach K is a big favorite at home, was over a 60% play on the blind. I don't think it's been quite as good in recent years, but Duke under Krzyzewski has had a tendency to blow teams out as a big favorite. He's the old uh, Bill Snyder of Kansas State back in football. That used to be an automatic play for me in the 90s as well. And now it's his fair, it's his, you know, swan song season. It's his final season. So maybe that angle is going to work again. So it's very dicey to play against Duke. And just looking at some of the uh, offshore leading indicator books, uh, they're hitting 22 in some spots. So it does look like this line is going from 21 and a half to 22 at some of the sharper books. Yeah. I, I mean, Dave, any interest in a first half Duke uh, play or would you just, uh, would you think they're just going to run all over? Um, uh... Yeah, I wish it was a football game because I'd love to take App State plus 21 against Duke in football. <laughs> but it's not football, so um, I can't give you – I'll give you a couple of things on some other games, but I made the line 20. It's 21. So, you know, next. Yeah, all right, here we go. Moving on, so, number let me, two. Let me, let me oh, jump oh, in and answer oh, uh, Steve's question. Uh, Steve, surprisingly, Duke as a – Duke as a home team, only 16 and 20 ATS the last three years. Actually, four games under 500. But when Duke is at home, they are 27 and 9 over under, a 75% overplay. They're 3 and 3 this year, but 27 and 9 the last three years. Wow. All right. Good stuff there. 12 yep. and 66 in the first half of that game as well, there, guys. Uh, all right, moving on. UNC Greensboro taking on uh, Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, Maryland, Baltimore County opens up as a four-point favorite here. Total of 137. A uh, lot like watching paint dry here, Steve Merrill. But uh, what do you think? Do you give the edge to the home team? 
Well, the one thing I will say about this is Greensboro is one of the 10 slowest teams in college basketball this year, plays at a snail's pace. Uh, meanwhile, Baltimore County actually is one of the faster paced teams in the entire country. So we do get that pace difference here, which is, you know, might be talking about lower level games here, but it's still one of the best handicapping factors you can use in college basketball. So if Greensboro is able to slow this down to their preferred half court style, that might be a little bit of a discomfort uh, for Baltimore County. Um, I would lean that way just based on the pace matchup. Not two teams I dig into deeply on a regular basis, uh, but Greensboro are really slow this year. They're averaging four steals a game. Baltimore County's averaging five steals a game. Um, Greensboro does have some turnover problems, but once again, Baltimore County doesn't steal the ball. They don't force a lot of turnovers. So I think this is actually a favorable matchup uh, for Greensboro, and I would lean towards them as a, a live dog in this game, currently plus two. All right, liking the, uh, liking the dog. How about you, Dave, in this game? Yeah, I think Greensboro might be on the way down this year. Uh, I know they're seven and four so far, but they've got a new coach. Uh, they lost a very good coach who went on to take a better job. And I think the transition, not so great uh, right now. I mean, the Tennessee game, that was kind of expected, not as bad as it, as it ended up being. But they, they were playing Tennessee in the wrong spot, and uh, they just got destroyed uh the Towson game that wasn't very good and their only other road game they beat northern Kentucky uh on the road by a point in overtime that actually isn't bad but um it doesn't look like they're very good here's here's the problem they play slow and they still turn the ball over a ton uh they've had a lot of problems as far as that goes I think UMBC off three straight road losses they're going to be hungry for a, for a win here. And they've played well at home so far. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat somebody who was non-D1. I don't care about that. But they did win by 30 against American. They win by almost 40 against Columbia. Not that those are good teams. But the fact is they played really well at home in those games. I think, they'll, I think they get Greensboro tonight. So I would lean to Maryland-Baltimore County here. All right. Mar Margaret seems to uh, like the dog here pushing it uh, that way. Ralph, what do you think? I like the dog, too. I will give you one positive about Maryland-Baltimore County. Dave talked about them playing well at home. Uh, they are 3-0 and as a favorite this year, so that they're doing everything you can ask. They lose as a dog. They win as a favorite. In fact, the favorite is now 8-1 and one this season in Retrievers games. The only time the favorite did not win the game when UMBC knocked off Pittsburgh as a six-point dog. But I look at the stats. The schedule is pretty close to me, the strength of schedule. Greensboro shooting 43%, allowing 39. UMBC uh, shooting 43, allowing 41. So you have a plus 4% on Greensboro. You have a minus 1% on UMBC. But look at the rebounding. Greensboro plus 11 rebounds per game. UMBC minus 7. That's an 18 rebound per game. Difference, I lean with the Spartans. All right, leading with the Spartans in that one, along with the marketplace. We are going to move on to our uh, final game here. Uh, UT Arlington traveling to Oklahoma to take on Oral Roberts with uh, one of the most electric players in the country. They open up as a eight-point favorite here, 139.5 as an opening total. Uh, a lot of eyes, uh, a lot of eyes going to be on Max Asmus there, Rod. Uh, Dave, uh, kid is electric. Do you trust Oral yeah. Roberts to get it done at home? I think the number's right in the game, uh, but I, I'll tell you what, what I do like in this game, and it, it's the closest I came to actually betting something tonight. Um, I like the under because it's, mm. the, it's gotten bet over, and it's up to, I believe, 144 now. I think that's a little high. Uh, and, and uh, again, I'm, I'm keeping things brief today because the, these games are of interest to almost nobody. Um, Arlington's offense sucks. It's absolutely terrible. Their efficiency is just off the charts bad. And I don't think they're going to get a lot of points. I mean, what are they going to score, 60? So unless Oral Roberts goes out and just goes wild offensively, I think you got an under here. that It, it might be pretty comfortable on the under. I can see Oral Roberts winning by maybe 10 points, and it could be like a 70 to 60 game well under the total. That's the way I go in this game. The Arlington, I'm telling you, the Arlington offense, if you look at their numbers, 
This is one of the worst offenses in the country this year. It, it, it's really bad. They're going to have to clamp down defensively to have a chance in, in most games they play. And I don't think they'll contain Oral Roberts to a great extent tonight. But I think hopefully they'll play enough defense and their offense will suck like, you, like it usually does. And you get an early, uh, a pretty easy under. Uh, he's not lying, Rob. I've seen number 322 in offensive efficiency. It doesn't get much worse than that. This game could get out of hand here, Ralph. What do you uh, What do you think we're going to get? Well, you know, I want to mention this. I have Arlington, despite how bad they've played, a team I'm going to keep an eye on. So far, they've played eight games. Guess what? Every D1 foe they've played made the NCAA tournament, including tonight's game against Oral Roberts. So they have played this number 14 schedule and they have played probably the most difficult schedule as far as looking at NCAA tournament teams. This team has been devastated. They have two guys that have started every game. There have been nine players that have scored double figures. One player missed the first three games. Um, another player missed three of the first five games. In last game, they were missing their number three and number four scores. They're finally all getting back. So we'll see what happens. So I'm not saying to back Arlington here. But I'm saying look for him. They do have a first-year head coach, Greg Young, but he was an assistant here for, I don't know, seven to ten years. So he didn't change much as far as the theme goes. One thing that stands out to me, Oral Roberts is number 356 in blocks. They get one out of every six shots they take blocked. This UT Arlington team, number 23 in the country, blocking 15% of the shots. They have some guy, Joe, I'm going to let you pronounce his name, Takaducha um, yeah. He's one of these kids that didn't play basketball, came, um, came from Africa, grew two feet in like three years, and he's turning into a monster blocking shots. So over under block shots today, I'm going to put that number at eight, see what happens. Uh, I'm going to pass on the game though, but again, if you take anything from this, I'm going to say keep an eye on Arlington moving forward. They got Oklahoma, which I hope they get blown out. And we'll see what happens December 30th against South Alabama. We'll now start looking to back them. Yeah, Just yeah, one quick comment. I, Go ahead, Dave. I, 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 uh, I've only got one eye that I can use to keep an eye on Arlington, and I'm not going to waste it watching <laughs> that second team. <laughs> That's what, yeah. I, got, uh, I got the over on the amount of times it takes us to pronounce that kid's name right, Ralph, as well. Uh, what do you think here, uh, Merrill? Dave's got a point, though. An, an under, are you keeping any eyes on UT Arlington in this? Yeah, I think, first of all, it's interesting that the uh, line has dropped from 8 to 7 on the dog, yet the total has gone from 39.5 up to 144. You know, and Oral Roberts is the offensive team, whereas um, the dog is the better defensive team. So the money's coming on the dog, yet the over. It's kind of counterintuitive, but... I totally agree with what Rob Michaels is saying. I do think Texas Arlington could be a play on team here in the near future. And actually they've won back to back games and they've covered three of their last four. So maybe they already are becoming a play on team. Um, so they're, they're my preferred side here for that reason. Also they're the better defensive team as an underdog. Um, and as Ralph said, they played a very difficult schedule. In fact, uh, 358 division one teams, uh, their schedule of defenses faced has been top 15 toughest in the nation so far. So maybe that offense isn't quite as bad as we think. In fact, when you factor in opponents play, they shoot 42.5%, not good, but their opponents allow 43 on the season. You know, So they're only slightly above av uh, below average. Um, meanwhile, Or Roberts shoots 44, their opponents allow 44.5. So they're both exactly a half percent below average shooting this year. Meanwhile, Arlington has a substantial defensive edge based on my rating. So I would lean towards Arlington. Does concern me a little bit. They're off the back-to-back -back wins, maybe a little bit flat here, but I think that also could be a momentum indicator. And Oral Roberts is coming off a bad loss against, uh, well, not a bad loss, but a loss at Missouri State, so they should be focused. But I agree with the line move. I take the plus seven here with an underrated Arlington team that's played a very difficult schedule so far. All right. It's going to go with the uh, dog in this one on the road against Oral Roberts. We are going to uh, shift gears here and see if we can't find one of these uh, atrociousness, ones that uh, maybe these guys like a little bit better than the other. And, Ralph, we have not had a Stetson play from you yet this year. I'm a little disappointed. So tell me you can find somebody in the 300s to play tonight. What do you got going on? Joe, <laughs> I am 4-0 I am and oh, my last four Chicago <laughs> State plays, and I could not get to them today on the road as, as a, basically a pick -em. 
I'm going to number 259, Jackson State. This is an actual two-star for me. Listen, Drake has played – Drake is 0-8 ATS the last eight games. They're still getting overvalued from what they did last year. Jackson State is one of the slowest tempo teams. And while their offense is worse than UT Arlington's, Dave wanted to talk about a bad offense. Jackson State's is worse. Their defense is actually very good. Drake is without Roman Penn, a four-year starting point guard. He got hurt four games ago. Since he's been out, they shot 45% against the number 356 defense of St. Thomas. They shot 43% against the 344 defense at Nebraska-Omaha, and they shot 46% against Clemson, the number 103 defense their last game. Guess what? Jackson State's the number 98 defense. The point guard is still out. They haven't found offensive continuity. It was 18 earlier. It's down to 16 and a half. But a slow-paced defensive team against an offensive team without a point guard in horrible offensive um, continuity – I will take the dog, game number 306087, part of the extra games. All right. I knew he'd go to the extra game board. My goodness. Steve Merrill, talk to us here. Where are you going uh, tonight? Are you leaning one way or the other? Yeah, I mean, look, these games, maybe it's not the prettiest card, but the green, the cash is just as green when it cashes, right? And I still use the same handicapping techniques on these added extra games as I do for the big boys and pace of play is always a huge factor for me. Just a quick reminder, I do have a strong NFL best bets now to that big NFL game between the Chiefs and Chargers at wagertalk.com. Also, you can still get half price for a full month of college and pro basketball for just 179 Hoops. 179 is the promo code, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Going to look at an extra game here for a free play, and I do like UNC Greensboro um, for a few reasons. First of all, pace of play, as I mentioned, is such a huge handicapping factor in college basketball for me. Uh, they play at one of the 10 slowest paces out of 358 teams in the country this year. Meanwhile, Baltimore County plays at one of the fastest paces in the country. So you've got a up-tempo against a slow-tempo team. It's much easier to slow down fast teams than to speed up a slow team. So I do think uh, the pace of play will be slow. That works to the advantage of Greensboro. And they have a substantial defensive edge here. They pretty much have played uh, – well, actually, they've played a slightly stronger schedule. And they still allow just 39% shooting. Baltimore County gets a weaker schedule, allows almost 45% shooting. So we're getting the better defense, the slow down half court team here. And uh, I think they're going to win this game outright. And we've seen money come in on Greensboro. So some of the sharp money agrees. Well, on open four, it's down to two, but I think they can win this one outright. UNC Greensboro plus two is worth a look at seven o'clock Eastern tonight on Thursday on the extra board. Don't forget strong NFL best bet for Thursday night football Chiefs Chargers plus half price basketball for a full month with promo code HOOPS179, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, good stuff there. Dave, what about it? Uh, any uh, any leans one way or the other? No, uh, this is a 0% bet for me, which means I'm not betting it. Uh, uh, on the under between Oral Roberts and Arlington, for the reasons already explained. Uh, I mean, if, you go, if you're Jones in for action on one of these college basketball games, I guess go with that or go with something that Ralph and Steve uh, talked about. I'll be focused on winning an NHL game tonight. And uh, uh, nothing in the NFL game, but I want to watch it. And two bold best bets are up right now. One of them really, it, it was close to a 5% for me. I made it a four, but, but I think it's a real good bet uh, in the Independence Bowl. So check it out now. All right, good stuff there. And our friends, of course, over at the Gold Sheet, I am sure they've got a look at something here tonight. I do believe it happens to be the uh, the same game in which I'll be uh, I'll be going with a best bet here, but they are going to look at the Charleston. Oh, is it really? They're going uh, College of Charleston and Stetson. Thank you very much. Finally, somebody busting out a Stetson game here. They like the under in this matchup, guys. And of course, the entire write-up available on our Wager Talk Twitter page, guys. At Wager Talk, make sure you check it out. Gold Sheet. Uh, dot com always great and useful uh, handicapping tools there for you great data great write-ups over at goldsheet.com i take it back not stetson but stanford is where i am gonna go tonight laying the 13 and a half uh it's all about second and third chance points here and that's what stanford is gonna get all night long uh the rebounding it's like night and day one of the best in the country versus one of the worst in dartmouth on the road Heading out to Cali. So I'll take Stanford tonight. Lay it 
against Dartmouth here. And to recap, once again here, guys, the card tonight with Steve Merrill going uh, Greensboro here, plus two. Ralph likes Jackson State, 16 and a half. Uh, Dave, uh, well, he's just going to look at the under 144, Arlington Oral Roberts. I'm going to look at Stanford laying the 13 and a half. And the gold sheet, they like Charleston laying five and a half. And the under 148 against Stetson. Uh, don't forget, guys, hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. We'll be back again tomorrow, of course, getting you ready for a weekend full of college hoops. In the meantime, uh, thank you very much for dropping by, hanging out with us on behalf of Ralph Michaels, Dave Koch, and Steve Merrill. Guys, best of luck with your plays tonight. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. We know this business is loaded with competitors and copycats, and we are very proud and extremely excited to be one of, if not the premier sports betting information provider in North America. From a massive library of free picks and handicapping videos, daily shows, podcasts, and articles, our free live odds service, a team of the nation's finest sports handicappers supported with top-rated customer service, we pride ourselves on being the leaders in our industry, always looking to evolve and stay multiple steps ahead of our competitors. With that being said, we truly do want to let you know we appreciate your patronage. Moving forward, seven-day all-access packages will be reduced from $119 to just $99, and our 30-day all-access packages are also being slashed moving forward, going from $349 to under $10 a day at only $299. Our new pricing is already active and available just by going to your favorite handicapper's homepage right now.